This is a tutorial explaining how to create an additive color wheel in Adobe Illustrator. The first thing you need to do is open up a new blank document with web presets. So choose File, New, and make sure that under New Document Profile you choose the Web option. So you'll double click on the drop down arrow and you'll see different options here, Print, Web, Mobile, and Devices. Make sure that you've choose, chosen Web as the standard. This sets the options here to a default for Web, one of which is particularly important for creating an additive color wheel, which is the color mode needs to be an RGB. This ensures that we're working with the additive colors of red, green, and blue. So click OK and a new document will open. And so now the next thing is to create some shapes for the color wheel, for the color swatches. So if you go look on the left hand side in your tool bar, you'll see there is a rectangle tool. If you click on that rectangle tool and hold down your mouse button, left mouse button, you'll see other options for other shapes you can choose. So go ahead and select a, sh a shape to use. I'm going to stick with the rectangle tool. And you need to draw a rectangle or whatever your shape is. Uh, one neat thing about using the shapes tool is if that if I drag out a rectangle you notice that I can change the width and the height of it just by moving my mouse around in different positions. Well what if I wanted to create a square? If I then press shift the proportions automatically constrain to a square. So this is helpful if you want to create a perfect square or in the case of the ellipse tool if you want to create a perfect circle you can hold down shift and it will create it will constrain the proportions. So I have created one shape and now I need to copy it six times over because I need three primaries and three secondaries. So I'm gonna go to the selection tool which is also called the black arrow tool in the toolbar on the left. Click on that to select it. And now I'm gonna drag out six copies of this by doing um, a handy little keyboard shortcut, shortcut called Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. If you hold down Alt or the Option you'll notice that a double arrow appears. When you see that double arrow then you can click and drag and it will make a copy of that shape. So we can drag out six copies very quickly in this way. Um, if you don't like this method, you can also use copy and paste. That's another option. Um, so now we have six copies of my square shape. And now I need to add the primary and secondary colors to them. So we're mixing, we're dealing with additive colors, which are, um, which have the primaries of red, green, and blue. So we need to deal with red, green, and blue channels in the color mixer. So first we're going to select this shape and make it red. So if you go to your left hand toolbar here, you can double click on this uh, color indicator swatch for the fill color double click it and it opens up something called the color picker. Now make sure that you uncheck this little box that says only web colors because we want to get the full range of the spectrum. So if you uncheck it then it gives you a much more nuanced uh, color wheel. And then you come over here and you see you have hue, saturation, and brightness, that's HSB. You have RGB, which are red, green, and blue channels, and you have CMYK, which are process colors. So we're dealing with RGB because we want uh, red, green, and blue uh, additive color wheel. So let's stick with those. The way these work is they go from 0 to 255, where 0 is no light, 255 is the maximum. So if we want to create red, then of course we want the full amount of red we don't want any green, so we're going to just highlight that and type in zero. And then I'm going to highlight the blue and type in zero. And then now I have red. So I click OK and I've created a red swatch. Alternatively, I can come over to the color pal panel, um, color palette, sorry, on the right hand side. If you don't see the color palette, choose window, color and make sure that there's a check mark next to color. You can also use the keyboard shortcut, whatever that might be. And this will ensure that you see the color palette in your color, in your um, palettes on the right hand side. It might be tabbed underneath one of these others. All you have to do is click on it to highlight it and bring it to the, to the foreground. 
And so from here, you can also double click on the little square swatch of color to open the color picker. And this time we want to create blue. So as you can guess, you probably already know, we want zero green and zero red and 255 blue. And that gives us blue. Another thing you can do in the color palette over here is you can use the channel mixers um, that are listed right here. Um, you see I have RGB, red, green, and blue, and little arrows next to them, and I can mix the colors this way. Well, if you don't see that, you can go um, click on this little icon for opening a drop-down menu in the color palette, and you have different options. You can open up the RGB channel mixers, the hue saturation brightness channel mixers, or the CMYK process channel mixers. So we want the RGB selected, so make sure that there's a check mark next to that. And then select your third box, which is going to be green, red, because we need the process colors of, or additive colors of red, green, and blue. Um, and so this one's going to be green. And so what do we do? Well, we have this square selected. And then we come over here and we pull out red to zero, and we pull out blue to zero, and we get green. Okay, so now comes the fun part, making the secondary colors. All you have to do is mix the primary colors, right? Because that's how you create secondary colors, is by mixing primary colors. So now I'm going to select this secondary color swatch, which is between the red and the green. And let's find out what color it becomes if we mix a full amount of red with a full amount of green and no blue. So I'm going to have a full amount of red, a full amount of green, and I'm going to take the blue away. And what do I get? I get yellow. So yellow is composed yellow light is composed of red light and green light. This is the additive process, which is dealing with light. Light is being emitted from your computer screen, and this is how light mixes. Okay, so then we need to mix red light and blue light to create the secondary color of magenta. And lastly, I'm going to select this last shape down here and mix green with blue. So I want the full amount of green, the full amount of blue, and I'm going to take out all of the red, and I get cyan. So these are the primaries of red, green, and blue in the additive color wheel, and the secondaries of cyan, magenta, and yellow. What if we want to meet, make intermediate colors in between these. Well, that's really fun and pretty easy to do, especially in Illustrator. You can use something called the Blend Tool to create intermediate steps in between these colors. Um, I'll quickly show you how to do that. Go to Object, Blend, Blend Options. Set the spacing to specified steps. Choose the number of steps you want. Three is generally a good amount. And then choose two colors, two color swatches. Whoops. Um, I just clicked and dragged a box around the red and the magenta or magenta. And to select them, or you can hold down shift to select both of them. Then go to object, blend, make. And it creates three specified steps of blended color in between these two shapes. Alternatively, once I set up the blends, um, blend options to specified steps with three steps, then I can go to the blend tool over in the toolbar on the left, which is this little icon next to the um, eyedropper. Click on this to select it. Click on your starting color. Click on your ending color. And as you can see, it creates a nice blend from one hue to the next. I can keep going in this, in this vein to finish out my color wheel. And so there we have a color wheel with 24 specified steps of blended hues um, with the primaries red, green, and blue, and the secondaries cyan, magenta, and yellow.